Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Whether you're in need of a website, domain or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. In the last year, I've started to experiment more with the way that I like my photographs. And by far the best piece of equipment which I've picked up along this journey is this Elencrom kit, which consists of a portable battery and a high sync flash head. What's so great about this is that I can use it in the studio as a normal flash, or I can quickly pack it up into a bag and take it out into the field and shoot on location. And shooting outside has actually led to all of my favorite photos that I've taken with it so far. With natural light being so unpredictable, particularly in the UK, it's pretty amazing to be able to carry this around and not really have to worry about what the weather's like. So my favourite style of photo to take with this kit is this weird balanced portrait where the subject is lit with really nice soft light and the background is kind of just a tiny bit darker and it kind of looks natural but at the same time not. It's this very strange subtle look I guess and I think it just looks really cool. I'd love to shoot like this all the time. And that is kind of what this video is about, showing you how I do this and uh, just some examples of how to do this. So how do you do it? Well first you need some kit, so here's what I use. There's a bunch of different brands which make pretty much the same thing and Elencrom just seemed to be the best kind of price to quality at the time when I was buying. So we've got the battery itself, I've got an ELB 400, the 400 is how much power it has. It's one of the smallest sizes they make, which means it's lighter, which to me is more important. It lasts a long time, I've never had a problem with that. And it's plenty bright. And then there's the flash head, which is a high sync Elencrom thing. You also need a light stand. I really need a better light stand. Uh, and you should also get some sandbags to hold it down so that it doesn't fall over and break your flash. I then use an umbrella. I've got a 125 centimeter one, which is the biggest one they sold and mine has white on the inside which makes the light softer. You could get one that is shiny on the inside and this would be harsher but spread the light kind of more. And then I also use a soft cover for it which is essentially just a big piece of fabric which will diffuse the light even more and turn it into a big soft box. And then you need something that will sync your camera to the flash you could use a sync cable, which would just plug in straight from the battery to your camera. But I use Elencrom's wireless transmitter, which is a hot shoe accessory, which allows you to be able to change all the settings from your camera, which to me is pretty important. And the final thing that you need is a light meter. You can't really do this without one. You need to be able to measure how bright your flashes are. So I use the Sekonic L608, but by no means do you need this one. I'd probably recommend just getting the 308, which is a lot cheaper, especially when you buy it secondhand. So I got my friends Will and Arden to come over and force them to let me blind them with the flash again and again so that I could show you some different examples of what different settings do and try to explain to you what's possible. So just as a disclaimer, these are sample images and not works of art, but hopefully they'll be able to demonstrate the point I'm trying to get across. So as a baseline, this photo is natural light. This is how it looked without any flash. It's very overcast and dark and it looks pretty glum. This is kind of a perfect situation to make it more interesting with the use of flash. So this next image is with just the flash head. So there's no diffusion. It's essentially just a really large flash gun like you'd find normally on a, a little hot shoe flash just way brighter and with more kind of spread coverage. At this point, you could add something in like a gel, which is a piece of colored transparent, um, I mean, I don't know what it is actually, I'm guessing it's plastic, which you can put over a light source and it transforms the light from white, I guess, to whatever color gel you've got. So if you wanted to pretend to be that photo of Frank Ocean in the bike helmet, this is how you do it. Then I added in an umbrella and it's at this point that the light starts to become a lot more flattering. A large amount of this is due to the softness of the light. The shadows on your subject's faces become a lot less harsh and it just looks nicer. And then to make it look even better, you want to add on the soft cover. And this then makes the light how I normally use it. This is normally the setup which I'm using to take photos. It's super soft, flattering light, and it looks great. And at this point, there's so many different ways where you can position the light uh, to get a completely different look. But I think that's a whole nother video and I'm gonna shoot that in the studio instead because the same principles apply. Instead, I wanna talk about the balance of the image, the difference between your subject and the background. And this is dictated by a few different settings. So the way that I normally go about setting up a shot is to stick the flash on 
at around 60% power, and then do a meter reading. See what aperture it is, and then think, is that going to be the right depth that I'm looking for? And then I change the flash power accordingly to try and get to where I want to be. And this can normally be between f5.6 and f16. Then, changing the shutter speed affects the background's brightness. So, the faster your shutter is, the less of the background that will be exposed, but your subject will remain the same, providing that your camera has a high sync speed. And when I'm shooting, I normally just play around with a few different options, but at this point I do have kind of a... But at this point I do kind of have an idea of what it might look like through a bit of experience. But yeah, I always take a few different options, just so I can see and pick my favourite one at the end. But one of the things you can do to help gauge what it might look like is take a meter reading without any flash of just the incident light and then you can kind of tell how much brighter your subject with the flash on will be than the background. But do you know what would be really bright? Your new shiny website with Squarespace. Squarespace is an amazing all-in-one platform for building websites. If you're looking to build a new portfolio for your photography or maybe you want to start a blog or open up a web shop, Squarespace can do all of this and much, much more. It's really easy to build a professional looking website and you definitely don't need any prior experience doing so. Having a portfolio of your work as a website, to me, is one of the most important things. You need to be able to show people what you're capable of and display it in the best way. And to me, Squarespace is an amazing way of doing so. And what's really great is if you sign up using the link in the description or using code negative feedback, you can get 10% off your order. So, what are you waiting for? Go and get yourself a lovely new website today. So, I think that's it. I hope this has been explained to an understandable level. I hope this has been explained to a somewhat understandable level. And I haven't just waffled. Hopefully, it's been helpful. And you know what? Maybe this isn't the best way to do it. Maybe there are some things which I don't know. I figured all of this out by myself. And it works for me. I don't know. It's just an example. But it's working. And I'm happy. So, <laughs> yeah. See you next time.